Hopefully the work that we're doing now with the Tech Talent Coalition is forecasting what those potential jobs are for the kids of the future. As Miami's tech scene continues to grow, one area of focus, of course, is talent. How do we develop talent? How do we nurture it? How do we drive opportunity through talent development across our community? And to unpack that, to talk about that, today we're joined by Terry Ann Brown of Miami TechWorks, an extraordinary initiative that's underway. Terry Ann, welcome. Hi, Ben. Thank you for having me. All right. We have a lot to discuss as we talk about this huge issue of talent. Mm -hmm. The future, for lack of a better expression, rests on it, yeah. on, on talent development. But before we get into that, let's talk about you mm -hmm. and how sort of you arrived in Miami mm -hmm. and in this space around ecosystem development, around supporting entrepreneurship, around talent development. Okay. So first, I am like a lot of people that live here. I'm from Jamaica. Now, I didn't naturally come here. I had to go the, the long route. I went to New York first, and then I went to school in Boston. I graduated Boston College. An eagle. An eagle. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, once an eagle, always an eagle. <laughs> and I moved here after I graduated in 2000, but my entire professional career has happened here in South Florida. Wow. Yep, I uh, started out in human resources. Um, so I've actually hired plenty here in South Florida, hired, um, fired, grew companies, helped a lot of small, medium-sized companies grow their talent uh, workforce. But my love for technology actually started as a young uh, kid. My first computer was a Commodore 64. Wow. And so I started coding in BASIC at that time. Come on, wow. Yeah. You know, from your computer science background, mm -hmm. from your tech background, yeah from your human resources background, it yeah. then led you into different roles focused on ecosystem building, on driving entrepreneurship. Talk about that. Yeah. So one transition happened in college, right? I was a, uh, went in thinking I was going to be a computer science major, got really overwhelmed my freshman year. And uh, when we talk about the Tech Talent Coalition, this is why it's important to me. I want to make sure that there's room for everybody in tech. Uh, even though you may not look like me, may not be the same skin color or whatever, want to make sure that tech is an open pathway to everybody for, for high paying jobs. And so when I got into college, I realized I was a little intimidated. I dropped out of the computer science role, but I never left tech behind. When I became an HR director, I was the type of person that was always in the IT office saying, how can we make this better? How can we introduce technology into improving our systems and, and process improvement? And so when I was here in South Florida, um, I had a great opportunity to take part in programs that, that gave you what it was like to found a startup from mm. idea stage to launch stage. Yeah. Broward County had this thing called Startup Quest uh, okay. that you could uh, join other people, create teams of 10 people, and we used IP that was uh, at University of South Florida. We came in third place. I met great people, and from there, I helped to launch the Founder Institute, yeah. which some people might know is a sure. global accelerator program that helped people go from idea stage to launch stage. From there, I met other startup founders, helped them launch their companies on Kickstarter campaigns. I was a part of the Babson WinLab program here, sure. the inaugural program there. And I co-founded my own de dental technology company with, uh, with some co-founders as well. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so that, <laughs> that is a, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Super interesting and sets up now your newest venture. Yeah. And leading Miami TechWorks. Yes. So let's start with what is it? Yeah. So Miami TechWorks is actually a $10 million grant funded program through the American Rescue Plan. And the goal is that in three years, we would have identified opportunities for Miami residents, whether they're entry level coming out of college or people that are looking to transition into high paying technology jobs. What are those jobs? The only way that we're gonna know is with the voice of the employers. Mm. So Miami Tech Works, uh, last month, February, or two months ago, February, we launched the Tech Talent Coalition, which is an industry led a partnership where employers are driving the conversation on what they need for tech talent of the future. How do they want to see the tech talent pipeline develop in South Florida? Now, first of all, to be clear, this is quite an achievement getting this $10 million grant. Yeah. Over 500 communities yeah. and organizations apply for this grant. It's only 32. Mm -hmm. One, yep. 
uh, and Miami-Dade College with a coalition which Beacon Council was part of, yeah. was able to secure and win to, uh, to get the $10 million. Give us a sense at the outset, what is sort of the time frame? Yeah, so the grant is actually set up in phases. Okay. Um, the first phase is just to establish the Tech Talent Coalition. Second phase is let's figure out what the employers are needing in terms of their talent pipeline and have them work alongside academic institutions to design uh, programs. The third phase, which is the longest phase that starts at the end of this year until September 2025, is the actual program implementation phase. Let's get folks enrolled in those programs, let's get them connected with employers, and let's figure out their pathway to the high paying technology job. So that $10 million is going to be deployed over those three phases, which will occur over the next three years into scholarships for talent to complete those programs but also into technical assistance for businesses, mm. specifically small businesses. But what do they need in terms of capacity building to understand how to hire for tech, how to create career pathways for techs, for tech talent, um, including internships and apprenticeship programs? So where are we now uh, on that journey? Where do we sit as we sit here on an, in, an, in an afternoon in April? Yeah. So we're so excited because we launched uh, February 17th, and during that launch date, we gathered some really great data. We were able to validate what are the top critical jobs in South Florida. We went in with some assumptions based off of some uh, existing data, and from the audience there, we gathered that we know software engineers, data analytics, cybersecurity are some of the top 10 jobs. But we also validated that there's opportunities to create career pathways around diversity in tech also entry-level positions in tech, and then as I mentioned before, small business capacity building. So those four key areas are now strategic work groups that are now meeting where employers are leading um, and they're having discussions around each of those four areas on what they can do with academic institutions to design programs and cre create those talent pipelines. What are some sort of examples of the types of programs that we could see in the not too distant future? So we know that it actually happens now. So we know that it actually happens where employers will contact uh, a college or university and say, hey, do you have anybody graduating in cybersecurity? And uh, you know, we've got uh, career services that'll say, okay, you know, I'll check my database and I'll see, I'll see what can happen. We want to scale that out to the point where employers and colleges or these training providers have a much closer relationship and it may be also that the training providers don't have to come up with a four-year degree. It could be a certification program or a non-credit program. So ultimately it's, de ultimately, it's developing that relationship between the employers and the, and the training providers, the academic institutions. And it's also getting the commitment from the employers to work alongside those academic institutions. And then it's getting the commitment to actually hire the tech talent here locally. That's mm -hmm. the number one ultimate goal. So any employer mm -hmm. can be part of this. Yes. Now, can any educational organization be part of it too? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. And now, where do you where does it come down on the non-traditional versus traditional? What I mean by that is, of course, we've got this amazing ecosystem of mm -hmm. traditional ec educational institutions: Miami mm -hmm. Dade College, of mm -hmm. course, FIU, UM, Barry, St. Thomas, Florida Memorial, extraordinary institutions. But then, of course. So many of our friends, our entrepreneurs, you know, in the community yeah. have launched efforts, you know, boot camp certificate programs are all welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome. Because the other key stakeholder in this are who are those community providers that can help support people on their journey to um, higher paying technology jobs. I always say that there's not one person that's gonna solve the problem for the community, right? We know that Miami has received tons of interest in uh, investors and st uh, startups coming, in, coming here to build their companies. And so that opens up plenty of opportunity for people to say, hey, I wanna create training programs or I wanna create pathways for people to, to earn technology certifications. So it's great for them to come to these work groups and get real live data from employers on what exactly it is that they're looking for in tech talent and build those relationships. Talent, of course, has been mm -hmm. something that um, has been talked about you know, for a long time. You know, in terms of having those those rock stars that are powering, you know, tech startups across our community, but also expanding and driving opportunity. 
So there have been lots of efforts around this. Mm -hmm. How do you see this effort being different? So one of the things that we're extremely mindful of when we created Miami Tech Works is we do not want to create any redundancy in what currently exists in yeah. a lot of the other initiatives, right? And so we've had great conversations with some of our partners like um, Venture Miami, Miami-Dade County, City of Miami, Tech Equity Miami, and the Tech Talent Coalition is really focused on just one thing, creating that impact of getting folks in high paying technology jobs. So when you look at that ecosystem, it's really of how do we all use our superpowers? Mm. How do we all take a look at the, at the community that we wanna serve and work together to help advance the community for everybody, to make sure that nobody's left behind when it comes to that conversation of, of tech equity, that nobody's left behind when it comes to uh, elevating Miami's ecosystem. So for people uh, who want to help, yeah. what are next steps? Yeah, so if you're an employer right now and you maybe just wanna find out more about how to build tech talent, how to work with the academic institutions, join a work group. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to email miamitechworks at mdc.edu. Next up is to definitely follow our blog on Refresh Miami. Uh, they're a great partner of ours, and you can find out additional information about where the work groups will be meeting and the dates and times. All right, let's talk about the future. Okay. What would success look like, or what do you hope to see three years from now? Oh, gosh. Um, so definitely I would have hit my KPI of at least a thousand people in high paying tech jobs, right? Yeah. So this is September, 2025. I've got a thousand people on the books as having earned those jobs and staying in those jobs. And then we've got employers who now have an understanding of what the region looks like in terms of uh, South Florida as a tech hub. So we've got good regional data. We know where we stand. We know where our benchmarks are and we can continue to set goals around technology uh, pipeline, or if we're attracting additional companies to come here, we know what will survive and, and how we can stay innovative in the, in the technology industry. That, that's a really exciting vision yeah. uh, for 2025. Yeah. So let's go to 2040, okay. right? Yeah. And with Opportunity Miami, as yeah. we're thinking focused on Miami's long-term future, 2040 has been a focus because it's you know, the, the child today, that's about when they'll be readying to enter the workforce. What do you envision the Miami of 2040 looking like, particularly as it relates to talent? Um, so possibly flying cars, right? Yep, possibly. <laughs> yeah, so possibly flying cars. Well, here, maybe sooner than that. Yeah, we'll see. Right? Yeah. And then intergalactic travel. That's right. <laughs> um, so, but I, I do think about, you know, my 14 year old and, so and good, yeah. obviously the job that she's gonna have in 2040 probably doesn't even exist today, but they definitely have uh, an opportunity to engage in technology or with technology in ways that we have, haven't even imagined yet. Mm -hmm. So hopefully the work that we're doing now with the Tech Talent uh, Coalition is forecasting what those potential jobs are. What What is Web3 gonna open up for for the kids of the future? And what does work-life balance look for kids of the future? Mm. Those sort of things. Yeah, yeah. so 2040 is, is a pathway to prevent the, the brain drain. Uh, we know that there are tons of kids now that might start out here in college and then they decide to relocate and go elsewhere. So we also, through the Tech Talent Coalition, have the potential to say, look, you have the opportunity to stay here in Miami, earn your degree here, work here, and create a great life for yourself. Here and potentially solve some of the local problems that are going here. I know that Opportunity Miami is focused on climate tech and, and that's a, a huge concern of the future. So I think 2040 is, a, is a, filled with possibilities. Terry Ann Brown, thank you very much. Thank you.